The village of Lim first crops up in the Doomsday Book of 1086 as Lime, which apparently means the torrent. This is hardly likely to refer to the peaceful waters of Lim Dam, if only because it wasn't built until 1821, but it could have referred to the Slitten Brook, which still runs through the village and may well have been more of a torrent in those times. The lower dam provides a more tranquil spot close to the village centre, but perhaps Lim's most famous landmark is the Cross, a Grade II listed building, the origins of which are unknown, but which dominates the centre of the village. The stocks which stand in its shadow are probably of 17th century origin, but were restored in 1897. Even on a quiet day, the village can be quite busy because Lim is fortunate enough to still have a thriving shopping centre. Only a few yards away is the peaceful Dingle and also the picture postcard Bridgewater Canal, which dates from 1761. Wander only a short distance from the centre and you find that Lim has many attractive woodland walks. Some old and some not so old. And of course, like all proper villages, it has a cricket club. Lim Utrington Park Cricket Club was established in 1884 and a feature of its picturesque ground is a magnificent beech tree which grows in the outfield and has stopped many a well-struck ball from reaching the boundary. Hmm, not a very elegant shot, but he was playing for the visiting team, not Lim. In the winter months, attention switches to Lim Rugby Union Club, which plays in the National League 3 Midlands. The club was founded in 1960, and in addition to providing a good standard of rugby for a small village, is a centre for social life. Away from the sports fields, Lim has plenty of other activities, and most of them involve a procession. The annual May Queen Festival is somewhat unusual in that it takes place in June. It dates from 1889, when the very first May Queen was Amy Astley. It cannot claim to have taken place every year, even discounting the war years. But since 1947, when it was revived, it has prospered. After the procession, there is a fun fair on the May Queen field, now officially the village green. And of course, the crowning ceremony with a May Queen and a Rose Queen. Of more recent vintage is the Lynn Festival, an 11 day celebration of music, theatre, arts, crafts, and just about everything else, which started in 1999. The festival opens with the Food Fest, another opportunity for local people to pack into the village centre for street entertainment, and of course food provided by the shops, cafes and restaurants, which have now become one of Lim's major attractions. Thereafter, the festival spreads out across Lim for the next couple of weeks, with events at various venues. It's a non-profit making event, which aims to promote the arts, culture and local heritage. And it offers a platform for local talent as well as professionals from outside. Awesome. 
Lim's oldest festival must be the Rush Bearing Sunday, which is known to have taken place at least as early as 1817. Again, there's a procession with local people accompanied by Morris dancers carrying rushes to St Mary's Parish Church. In olden times, the rushes were used to provide a carpet in the church, and the day marked the start of a local wakes week, when even the banks closed. Today, the procession ends with a special service at the church overlooking the dam. Come Christmas and it's time for another procession for Lim Dickensian Day. A special event to help boost trade in the village shopping centre, which was launched in the early 1980s. Father Christmas is there, of course, throwing sweets to children in the crowd. And there are fairground roundabouts, street entertainers, and again, Morris dancers. Many of the shopkeepers and some of the shoppers get dressed up in Dickensian costume. Winter can lay on some impromptu entertainment of its own, and when it does, you can be sure the snow-covered slopes around the dam will be the place to go. At Easter, the Lim Round Table stages the annual Lim Duck Race, a unique event that raises thousands of pounds for charity. Hundreds of sponsored plastic ducks are released into the stream which flows through the dingle and drift towards the lower dam where the village is packed with locals. It's not exactly a high speed race and the ducks sometimes need a little help from some intrepid canoeists. But as they reach the finishing line, the excitement becomes intense. It's the winner! As usual, the village lays on plenty of entertainment for families. The most recent attraction in Lim is the historic Transport Day, which rounds off the Lim Festival. There's another procession of course, this time of vintage cars and other vehicles, and the village is again packed with people. There are vehicles of all types and ages. 
and horse-drawn transport is not forgotten. The milkman's horse finds plenty of friends in the crowd. The May Queen field is taken over by hundreds of historic vehicles and the event draws enthusiasts from a wide area. Waterborne traffic adds another dimension to the day with historic barges and narrowboats drawing more crowds. It's a reminder that the Bridgewater Canal was once probably the most important trade route through Lim and one of the main reasons the village developed at all. And so we return to where we started, Lim Dam, which for many people will always be the jewel in the village's crown. <laughs>